Hey everyone, Reed here from the Havens Consulting YouTube channel. For those not familiar with me, I'm a Microsoft MVP with Power BI, just like Parker, and I'm collaborating with him again for another guest post between our channels. Today I'd like to walk you through an advanced folder combined technique. More specifically, what happens when you need to combine multiple files, but when each file is an Excel file that has multiple sheets you want to combine as well. To top off this demonstration, we'll even get to see how to clean each sheet individually. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by coming up to the Get Data button up here, go to More, and I'm going to select Folder as my data source right here, and hit Connect, and go ahead and Browse. And what I've done is I put this on my C drive. I have a folder in here, in this case, Data Files, that contains multiple files that I want to combine. Select OK. Go ahead and select OK again. There we are, and we have two files in here. So let's go ahead and hit Combine and Edit. And as I mentioned, what you can see is that each file does have a sheet for Canada and a sheet for United States. We can even see that if I actually go to the 2015 file up here, they have those two. Same with the 2016 one. So these files all contain the same multiple sheets, but they have multiple sheets in them. So how do I apply a transformation that cleans these up and combines them as well as the files? So kind of two levels of combinations that need to happen. So what we're going to do, instead of selecting an individual sheet, I'm going to right click on the sample file parameter folder that you see up here. Right click and select edit. And you can see that that created that final combined table over here on the left, but we're not going to focus on that yet. We're actually going to come up to the transform sample file from data and you can ignore everything else in here except for just this one transform sample file. That's where all of your transformations on each individual file or sheet can be made. So we're going to select that. And what you can see is this is the sample file that we set up in that pop-up menu earlier. And any transformations I do on here will be applied on each file individually before it gets combined to this final table down here that's appended together. So we have both the United States and Canada. So how do I apply transformations to each of these individually? And let's take a quick look at the data. If we actually expand this out, there we go. We can see that there is some junk data that is in here. So United States looks like it has some extra header rows at the top. It needs to promote the headers as well. We also need to do that for Canada. So there's definitely some information in here that we can clean up. So how do we do that individually? So to start with, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create some subqueries in here that are going to clean up each of those sheets individually in this applied steps list. So to start with, I'm going to actually right click source. I'm going to say insert step after. And what that does is simply reference the prior applied step in here. So I'm going to call custom one, I'm going to rename that to source custom. And I'm going to use this to transform my United States sheet. And then I'm going to do that as well for Canada. So I'm just going to go through my normal process now with this. I'm going to select the United States as a table. There we go, that pops it out. Now that did a promoted headers and change type. So it did a few things that I didn't want quite yet. So I'm going to delete my change type. I'm going to delete that promoted headers. And what I can see here is that first row is something I can get rid of. So 2015 sales, that's a transformation I can go ahead and clean up. So I'm going to select the query transformations up here, select remove top rows and remove the top one. There we are. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. So if I actually take a look and we scroll all the way down to the bottom of this query, let's see if I can get it to load. There's a grand totals row down here at the bottom and I want to get rid of that too. So come up, same thing. Select the query transformations, remove bottom rows, go ahead and select number one. Perfect. So we've removed the dirty data out of here. And now I can go ahead and use first row as headers up here. Pop those headers up. There we go. And I've cleaned this up. And um, for now, we can actually get rid of that change type step as well. So now what I can actually do is I can do this same thing that I just did for the United States sheet. I can also do that for Canada. So I'm going to right click promoted headers. I'm going to select insert step after. And up here where it actually is referencing the previous step promoted headers, I'm actually going to change that back to source custom. There we are. And that will now point back to that original step before I selected a sheet. So I'm going to do that. There we are. Now I'm actually going to select Canada this time. Perfect. And I can come up here. I'm going to go ahead and rename custom one and call that source Canada. And I'm even going to change this one at the top from source custom to source United States. There we go. Source Canada down here. And we can get rid of those change types and that promoted headers. And the same thing I can do to this one. Now that I have the Canada sheet, I can also remove top rows because that has that top row at the top. Remove number one. Now if I take a look in column one, 
They're actually in to hit a quick load more. There we go. There is no grand total row in here. So this one actually does not have a grand total at the bottom. So I can do a separate set of transformations on this. So I don't actually need the bottom row like the United States did. I can just simply remove that top row and promote the headers. Perfect. So I essentially now have my Canada transformations and my United States transformations. If you wanna make this really clear as well to make sure that you have clearly labeled where the end of your transformations are for each one of these. As an example, promoted headers for the United States transformation is technically the last step, but you can, again, just insert a step after, which doesn't do anything except for referencing the previous applied step. And I can rename this to, and I'll put a couple little dashes in there, final US table, a couple dashes, and the same thing as well down here, insert zip after, rename that custom one to a couple dashes, final Canada table. There we are. And now I can actually union these two tables together. So I'm gonna come up to append. And what we can do is you can just go ahead and select this transform sample file. We'll edit this in a second and just kind of change the M code a little bit. So appended query, you notice that it says final Canada table twice. So all we have to do Let's change this first one to final US table. There we are, final Canada table. So it's appended those two together. So we can even change that to appended US and Canada. There we go. Take a look over here. We can see that United States and Canada is in here. So now we've cleaned up both individually and ended up with a final thing in our transform sample file. So these steps that we have right here with the append is gonna happen on every single file in that folder. And then it's gonna come all the way down to this combined query at the very end that's appended all these files together. And you will notice that there's an error just because the change type did attempt to do a change type on a bunch of column names that no longer exist. So we can quickly get rid of that. But we can see a couple of things now. Our source in here is 2015 and 2016 sales. So our folders combined all the files and then scrolling to the right, we do have country for United States and for Canada as well. So we have each of those sheets. So it's a great way to do that. And technically I could have done all the transformations in here after they combined all the sheets and everything else, but I would have found it more difficult to do that. So this is showing you a great way to combine those individually sheet by sheet. And it does take a little time to set this up initially, as you can see through some uh, kind of uh, nested queries in here, but it's a nice way to be able to do that without having to use a whole bunch of different folder combines and then adding all those together. So for me, this is a simplified way of doing it. So I hope you found this useful. And if you liked this video, please click that like button below or go ahead and subscribe to Parker's channel for more great videos like this. You're also welcome to hop over to my YouTube channel as well and check out those videos and subscribe if you like. And otherwise, I will see you in our next video.